Thank you for joining us for the Titus Timeout Podcast. I am Matthew McLaren, Product Manager for Titus's Grills, Registers, and Critical Environment Products, and I will be hosting today's podcast and others in the future, along with our other Titus Product Managers. Today's podcast will focus on the Wells-Riley equation and how it relates to HVAC system design. The Wells-Riley equation is a model that can be used to predict the likelihood that an occupant in a space will contract an infection from an airborne infectious disease. It should be noted that the Wells-Riley equation is a model that makes several key assumptions. These include a well-mixed, steady-state environment and excludes the effects of close contact airborne infection spread like being sneezed on by somebody. The probability of contracting an infection is modeled by the formula 1 minus E raised to the inverse of the number of infectious individuals I times Q. Q is the generation rate of infectious particles. This generation rate is not a real physical rate, but is a relative dose unit used by epidemiologists. The number of infectious individuals times the generation rate is then multiplied by the breathing rate of the exposed individuals and the duration of exposure. This value is divided by the ventilation rate of clean air in the space. The resulting percentage can also be expressed as the ratio of potentially affected individuals to the number of exposed individuals. Even with making the previously stated general assumptions about a well-mixed room and being sneezed on, the equation allows us to see the impact of HVAC system design on potential infection rates. The most evident of these is ventilation rate. If we take a hypothetical office building of 12,700 square feet being fed by a dedicated outdoor air system with 60 workers, The minimum ventilation rate per ASHRAE standard 62.1 is calculated by the square footage times 0.6 CFM per square foot. In addition to the outside air per square foot, we need to account for the occupants. The 60 workers require 5 CFM each. This brings us to a total of 1,062 CFM. Assuming 10 foot ceilings, this is about half an air change per hour. With one worker infected with flu and a generation rate of about 100 per hour, the probability of one of their coworkers requiring an infection is approximately 20% or 11 to 12 workers. If we increase the air change rate to two air changes or 4,248 CFM, the number of potential infected coworkers decreases to roughly 5% or 3 coworkers. This shows the impact that HVAC system design, specifically ventilation and air change rates, can have on potential spread of airborne infection. In a future podcast, we'll take a look at how the Wells-Riley equation has been modified to account for variable volume systems and filtration. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for taking the time out with us.